1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and let's begin reading in verse number 13. The Bible says, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and here's the phrase I want you to pay close attention to, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord." Now, if you're a Bible student, you've spent time in the Scripture, you understand the context of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is the, uh, the blessed hope, or what's commonly known as the rapture of the church. We're not going to deal with the rapture of the church this evening, but we are going to deal with a phrase, at least a word, found in verse number 16, when it says, the voice of the archangel. Now, I did not... Uh, go and research everything that tradition teaches on the archangel or what they would say the archangels, plural. So I'm not here to spend time to take up your time talking about what everybody else says about this. We're going to try to merely focus on the scripture. I will tell you that uh, the Roman Catholic Church is pretty uh, pathetic as it goes to dealing with uh, angels in general and spiritual beings. They, uh, there's more tradition than there is Bible. And it seems like we can't pass this, uh, this study up without mentioning that you're not going to find anywhere in your Bible, anywhere, that uh, angels are female winged creatures. You're, you're not going to find it anywhere. In fact, there is a time when female winged creatures show up and they are spiritual beings, but they are devilish spiritual beings, not, uh, they're never called angels, okay? And so I just throw that out there because we, so much of what we believe in our culture is based on art and tradition versus what the Bible says, and we want to we do our best to base our belief system on the Bible and not on tradition. So our study this evening is going to focus in on this, um, this being called the archangel. You'll notice that in every time I reference to the archangel, I'm going to reference to the archangel as being singular. Because of the best I can tell from scripture, it, there is only one archangel. There is, there is one phrase in the book of Daniel that leads me to believe that uh, the Let let me say it this way. There's one phrase in the book of Daniel that opens the door for people to consider the possibility of multiple archangels. And yet there's only two times in your Bible that the word archangel is used. Both of them, it's in the singular. It's the archangel. One time is in our passage here before us. The other time is in another passage we'll go to in a minute. And in that passage, the archangel is actually named. His name is not Gabriel. His name is Michael. Now the word archangel, it's two words, it's arc and angel, you know that. Uh, but what you may not know is that the, the, what's used as a prefix in this word, arc, A-R-C-H, is actually a shortened version of another word that teaches or means chief or principal. It's the highest, okay, it's a, of the high rank. Uh, the, the, the arc is found in other words in the Bible, Herod Her the Tetrarch. It's at the end of that word, and tetrarch means he's the the principal ruler over four. Tetra is four, over four divisions of a kingdom or province. This one you're probably more familiar with, the patriarch. The the patri, that's that's the father, the paternal, okay? That's the father, the dad that's over. He's the highest dad in this family line. The Bible calls uh, King David a patriarch. The Bible calls Abraham a patriarch. The Bible says the 12 sons of Jacob were patriarchs. In other places in the Bible, they're called fathers. It's, it's the, it's the, they're the, the, the fathers of the Jewish people, if you will. So that ark, A-R-C-H, speaks to authority. It speaks to power. It speaks to one that is at the top 
of the chain, if you will. Now, the word angel, you, you probably are pretty comfortable with what you know about that, but in a most basic sense, the word angel means one who is sent forth to minister on behalf of the Lord. I say that because there are going to be times in the scripture where an angel is not what we think of as an angel as far as a spiritual being. In fact, just to throw this out there, the Lord Jesus Christ is identified as an angel. And yet we know he's not one of the created beings that we know of as angels. So you, you got to get that understanding. Also an evangelist. If you think about the word evangelist, angel is right there in that word. It's one who goes forth on behalf of the Lord as a minister or a messenger. Let me show you uh, this. Look at, uh, look at uh, Hebrews chapter 1. And there are several verses for this, but we're just going to look at one. And, and then if you need more, I can give you more later. But Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 7. And this is a quote from, uh, I believe it's Psalm 104. And the Bible says in Hebrews 1, 7, Of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Do you notice the relationship there between the word angels and ministers? Angels are to be ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. In, in fact, when the angels came and ministered to the Lord Jesus Christ there in the, in the, uh, the, the wilderness temptation that the devil uh, tried to put on the Lord, they're ministers sent forth. There are times when an angel is used in a descriptive way of a man. The Bible says of Stephen that they beheld his countenance as that of an angel. It doesn't mean he became an angel. And uh, I, I don't really want to spend any time on this because, again, we can spend all day long refuting everybody, what everybody else says. That's not going to solve all our problems. But you don't become an angel. There's nothing in the Scripture that suggests you will become an angel in eternity. The only suggestion we have from Scripture is that we will become like the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I just want to throw that out there. But... The, the, the most common use of the word angel in the scripture is what we are thinking of, and it's a created being that the Bible identifies as a spirit. In fact, um, go to, go to uh, no, let's just look at this. Uh, we're right here in Hebrews 1, 7. Let's just look at it. It says, in the of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels, what, what are they? They're spirits. Okay, they're spirits. You say, well, then they're like the evil spirits. Well, uh, Hold that thought. Look at Genesis chapter, uh, look at Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Again, I don't have time to read the entire passage, but we've been here, I think, it, we, we were here in Sunday school just, what, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, something like that. So, so you've got a, a good memory of this chapter. But Genesis chapter 19 the Bible says, and there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate, okay? And if you look on down, let's see, verse number, uh, look at verse number five. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the, the men? So when angels show up on earth, they show up as men, right? You don't pull the cloak off and say, you know, where are your wings? They're not there. They look just like. They look like men. And so when angels visit the earth, I mean, that, it makes sense. And I, man, there's so much we could get into and I don't want to do it because it just opens, you know, one can of worms opens another can of worms. But the Bible says we're to, to be careful uh, that we might be um, entertaining angels unaware. Well, why would the Bible say that if an angel is going to show up, you know, with this bright glow and big wings, you know, long flowing hair, you know, and you say, well, hey, I know who I'm dealing with, Right. It just seems like he's just, they're just men. That's what they look like. And uh, sometimes they do show up in glory and there's a brightness to them. Sometimes they just show up and they just look like plain old men. Um, angels are immortal. Okay. Uh, again, I can give you references later. They're known for their wisdom, but they are not omniscient. Meaning they don't have all wisdom. They are wise, but they are not omniscient. They are mighty because they're greater in power than we are. But they're not almighty. Okay, so there's a limit to the power. And again, all these things I've got verses for you on that we can maybe give you after the service. Now, before God, the basic responsibility of the angels in heaven is to praise and worship him 
And that involves their obedience to his commands. Whatever he says, that's what they do. Okay, now we understand there are rebel angels. We're not dealing with them uh, tonight. So they do whatever God needs them to do. If God says, here's what I need you to do, do it. They'll, they'll do it. Zechariah chapter 3. If you just want to jot that down, there are uh, these that stand by and they're waiting for the, the king to give a signal that he needs something and they go forth and do it. Now, as far as man's concerned, the basic underlying premise of the angel's work in our life is found in Hebrews chapter 1. Where I'm still here. I don't know if you're still here, but Hebrews 1.14 it says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So they minister on our behalf. Now, everybody talks about guardian angels, right? Okay, you know, well, my guardian angel really took care of me. And, you know, my guardian angel was on the back of the car when I pulled out in front of those people. And it said, whoa, don't crash these people. I'm okay, we don't have any Bible for that stuff. I'm not telling you not to believe it. I'm just saying you, you, you don't have any proof of that. We know angels are sent to minister on our behalf. What does that mean? I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know if that means you're choking at a restaurant. One of them is going to come up and all of a sudden help you. And you, you spit out whatever you're choking on. And you think, man, how'd that happen? It was an angel. I don't know. Okay. But they minister. That's what they do. Now, we're... we're, we're uh, talking a little bit about angels, but I need you to understand that there's a, uh, there's a hierarchy to this thing. And so you have, you have your, the, the mass of angels, and the Bible says there it's an innumerable company of angels. I want you to think about that. And here's what some people uh, say, it's kind of funny, but they say that angels are constantly being created. Well, that's not what it means. It means it's innumerable to us. Okay, you're not going to sit there and say, well, one angel, two angels, three. That doesn't mean, God, think about this. If God doesn't know how many angels there are, there's information God doesn't have. So God knows how many angels there are. And, and we don't have any reason to believe they are infinitely being created. Oh, there's a new angel today. Look at that. Oh, there's a new angel today. Look at that. There's so much stuff made up. And it, it's kind of sad. And, and country people, uh, let's be honest, right? We are the worst for buying this stuff. We are, the, our music, you know, the Southern Gospel music stuff, man, uh, you know, what, the, a, a new angel, an angel got his new wings today or something like that. What in the world are we thinking? It's just nonsense. And I'm not trying to be mean. I mean, but we, we've got a Bible. We've got to read this thing and make sure we're not just buying into stuff. Now, at the very top of this hierarchy is the angel of the Lord. And oftentimes in Scripture, in fact, when I say the highest is, is the angel of the Lord, I'm speaking of Jesus Christ. He's the creator of all the angels. Okay? Under the angel of the Lord is the archangel, which means one who is chief or principal among the angels. And then underneath his command, you have angels. Now, uh, in his creation, God put a built-in hierarchy, and it, it pertains to these angelic beings. Look, uh, look back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 with me, if you will. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and uh, look at verse number 16. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, the Bible says... Um, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So at the Lord Jesus' coming for the church, a voice is going to come forth, and it is the voice of, and God could have said, the voice of an archangel. Right? He could have said that. The voice of an archangel. A-N. A-N. That's an indefinite article, but he chose the definite article, the, T-H-E. He said the voice of the archangel. So there was an opportunity for the Lord to let a cat out of the bag that, hey, this, there's more than one of these guys. But the Lord put it the way he put it, suggesting that there is one archangel. At least that's the suggestion, okay? I'm not... Trying to be overly dogmatic about this, but it just seems that way. Look at uh, Jude verse number 9. Jude verse number 9. 
In this passage, again, the Lord could have worded things differently, but he worded it this way. Jude verse 9, the Bible says, yet Michael, and, and, and the Lord had a great, a great opportunity right here. Michael, one of the archangels. Michael, an archangel. He had a great opportunity to let us in on, hey, there's more than one of these guys. Even if the Lord never named, because a, a lot of times people say Gabriel is a, an archangel. But the Lord could have said, even if he didn't name the other ones, even if he didn't say, okay, let's just go down the list. Here they are. You know, there's three of them. There's five of them. The Lord had an opportunity to let us know, I'm only going to give you the name of one of these, but he's just one of them. He's not the archangel. But verse number nine, yet Michael, the archangel. So again, it seems like, it seems like there's one, right? I mean, that's it's just what it seems like. Now, here's the verse. Go over to Daniel, Daniel chapter 10. Here's the verse. And maybe there are other ones that they use. I don't know. But the, the, here's the verse that kind of leads people to believe that there's more than one archangel. Now, again, we just looked at all the Bible verses that use the word archangel. There were only two of them. 1 Thessalonians 4, Jude, verse number 9. That's it. That's all we got. Okay? Okay. So, it's not found anywhere else, Old Testament, New Testament, not there. Daniel chapter 10, look at verse number 13. The Bible says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes. So, because people see the word chief there, they say, well, see, that's, it's, it's suggesting that he's, he's just one of the archangels. But if you read the context of, of Daniel chapter 10, really the book of Daniel altogether, there are princes above nations. Okay, that's what the Bible seems to teach. These are, if you just go read about the prince of the kingdom of Persia, these are not normal guys. The, the book of Daniel gives you light on that. There's a spiritual warfare that, that's going on that you and I don't see. And we think, well, this nation got mad at this nation. We don't understand what all is going on behind the scenes to stir up all this. When the Bible talks about principalities and powers that we war against, in that same context, it says you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. It's not people you're wrestling against. There are powers up there that are fighting and all this stuff. And so when we read in Daniel chapter 10, it's telling us that Michael is one of the chief of those spiritual beings that are over nations. Okay? So I think if the context is true, and I think that it is, I don't think it's suggesting he's one of the archangels. The Bible has identified him, him otherwise as the archangel. Now look at Revelation chapter 12. If you don't mind, hold your place here because I'm going to come back to Daniel. Okay? It'll save us some time in a minute. Go, go to Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. And look with me, if you will, uh, to verse number 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7. I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, this is about, you know, the middle of Daniel's 70th week, the tribulation period. And uh, the, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, and there was war in heaven. Michael, and then I want you to watch the wording here. What does it say? Michael and, it doesn't say Michael and the Lord's angels, Right? It doesn't say Michael and Jesus' angels. It doesn't say Michael and, you know, God or the Lord. It doesn't say that. It says Michael and his angels. Does it not sound like Michael has angels under his authority? Now, if you read the rest of the passage, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels. So remember that the devil has taken some angels with him. They are under his authority, not God-given authority. The God-given authority is Michael is the archangel. Right. Now let me just throw this out there, okay? Because I think this is important for us to get. Um, angels are not necessarily cherubims or seraphims. If you do a Bible study on cherubims and seraphims, you will find that visibly the Lord gives a description of each of those and they, 
they, they're, they're different, okay? Cherubims are not seraphims, and seraphims are not cherubims. The, the, and in fact, one of the dead gives, giveaways is the Lord says this one, and I can't remember which. I think it's the, I, I, I don't want to even go there. One of them has six wings. I think the other has four wings, okay? What, the, the faces are different. And yet angels, we're never told in Scripture they have wings, so they're different. Satan is called the anointed cherub that covereth. Again, we're, we're not going to deal with that, but he's talking about being over the mercy seat and looking down upon the mercy seat. He's one of the cherubims. Cherub is the singular. It's, he's one of the cherubims. But the, the angels are different. So Michael is the archangel. He was assigned to be over the angels, but some of the angels rebelled and went with the anointed cherub instead of Michael. And that's a battle that's... I'm, it depends on what you believe about the scripture. I think it took place before Adam and Eve uh, got on this earth that the angels initially rebelled against God and went with Satan. And yet we find all the way out in Daniel's 70th week we're going to still be fighting, right? Angels that went with Satan versus they should have stayed with Michael. Now, go back with me if you will to, uh, to Daniel chapter uh, Daniel chapter 10. Why, why, what's the purpose? What's the responsibility? What's the ministry of this archangel? He's the highest, right? He's the highest of the angels. He's the archangel. And uh, Daniel chapter 10, verse number 21, the Bible says this. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael... Your prince. Well, he's talking to Daniel, who is a Jewish man, and he said, Michael is your prince. Sounds like from that passage that Michael, the highest angel, the one that's assigned the authority over all the angels, it seems like he's responsible in some way, form or fashion for Israel. Look at Daniel chapter 12, verse number 1. The Bible says, and at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince. That's, that's pretty cool, is that not? The great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. Now it's interesting in scripture the Bible talks about children have angels beholding the face of, uh, of the father. That's pretty neat, right? It almost seems like children of the world, I couldn't disprove this. Maybe I, I, I feel like I could prove it, but I, I certainly couldn't disprove it. Uh, but maybe there are angels that are standing before the father on behalf of children. You say, man, there's a lot of bad stuff that happens to children today in the world. There is. But, but just know that there are angels beholding the face of the Father on their behalf. That's pretty good. But this is an angel, the highest angel, Michael, the archangel. What's his responsibility? Well, his responsibility is to watch over the nation of Israel. Now, have you ever wondered, have you ever looked at a map, you know, a world map, and considered how small Israel's tiny? I mean, it really makes no sense why they're still around. It really doesn't. I mean, if you just stop and think about, like, go, go home t tonight and just pull up a world map. And then zoom in. Quite a bit. Because you're going you're gonna to say, oh, where's Israel? it has got to be this big chunk of land over here. No, zoom in. Oh, it's got to be this big. No, zoom in. It's a little bitty piece of property in the whole scheme of things. And you say, well, they're just, they're just really, really, really good soldiers. I don't care how good of soldiers you are. As many people as hate Israel, you're done for. You basically understand the whole purpose of the United Nations is anti-Israel. You say, well, sometimes they say pro-Israel things. They, you wait. Okay, you wait. So how do they survive? Because they've got a prince that's standing over them, watching them. And, and look, they, you say, well, they don't acknowledge the prince. They don't acknowledge God. I understand that. But how many times has God been there for you when you didn't acknowledge him? 
And they say, well, we've got this dome and we got all... I'm t- I don't care what you have. If the prince wants to knock something down, he just knocks it down. Okay, so, so there's a great prince and, and he's superior to the other princes. He's called the great prince. Go back with me, if you will, to Jude verse number 9, and then we're going to go to one other passage and we'll be done. Jude verse number 9. There's a lot of crazy stuff in the Bible. I hope you, you know that. And, and a lot of times, you know, we don't like to talk about it because we don't want people to think, you know, we're out there. But, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to just ignore it, you know, and act like it's not there and just... Well, all we want to deal with is, you know, these five things and just forget the other stuff. I think we're supposed to look at all of it as much as we can. Jude, one chapter, right? Verse number nine. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil. So, so Michael and the devil are, are having a, they're having some strife. They've been, they've been having strife for a long time. But they're having a little dispute. Okay, they're, they're contending with each other. Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses. You don't know how much I want to stay there. Why are they fighting about Moses' body? Who cares about Moses' body? Have you ever thought about that God himself buried Moses? I think I've said this before here. I kind of think God just... Stuck him under the ground without any fresh dirt being dug. Okay? God just... Whoop. You say, well, why do you say... Because nobody knows where Moses is buried. Right. Now, come on. You know people. When, when, uh, when Elijah was taken from Elisha, what did they... What did, everybody came running to Elisha. And they said, we're going to go look for Elijah. Right? We're going to go find the great leader. So you mean to tell me, Moses dies, he just doesn't come back down... And, and everybody's like, okay, we're just going to move on with life. No, they went looking for him. I'm certain they, well, where did, it, where, where did Moses go? We didn't see any fresh dirt. Of course you didn't. Because God didn't want you worshiping the grave of a man. And maybe, maybe, just throw this wild thought out there. Because we're just, we already have gone into about 7,000 conspiracy theories tonight. Might as well add one to it. You know the devil's not omniscient. He doesn't have all knowledge. So maybe one of the reasons why God did it the way that he did it was to hide it from Satan. You say, well, Satan knew where he was buried. Okay, then you explain to me verse number 9. Why is he fussing about it? Why is he wanting the body of Moses? Got to be a reason. So Michael and the devil are foes. They're at odds. Go to Revelation chapter 12. This is where we were just a little bit ago. I want to show you this and then we're done. Have you ever wondered why in Daniel's 70th week, something changes at the midpoint to where I think that there was already wrath in, I think there's already wrath in the first part, but it gets worse in the second part. That's not... The only thing that's up for debate is some people say there's no wrath in the first part. I believe there's wrath all the way through. But it gets worse in the second part. There's no doubt about that. In fact, the Bible says it's great tribulation. Like, it goes from bad to worse. Well, why why does it change for Israel? Well, it seems like around the middle point of Daniel's 70th week, that Israel's prince gets called away for another task. And when he gets called away for another task, uh, forgive my my use of this, but let's say it a different way. All wrath comes to full fruition in that second half. So what happens? Why does everything fall apart at the middle point? Well, Revelation chapter 12, verse number 7, the Bible says this, and there was war in... In heaven. So Michael, the great prince of Israel, standing there, he's the archangel, right? He's watching over Israel. Something happens, and the devil, the devil starts something up in the third heaven, and God says, Let's get Michael up here 
and let's deal with this. So Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Now you understand that the devil has fallen from heaven, but he still has access at this moment in time. He will one day be cast out. There is a difference. In the book of Job, he's able to go before the Lord and give an account of what he's doing, his activity. He, he's responsible to tell the Lord what he's up to. But now you're seeing the change. Verse number 9, the Bible says, And the great dragon was, what does it say? Cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. As far as heaven goes, the Bible says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. Hallelujah. Which accused them before our God day and night. It says, Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. You know what happened? The great protector of Israel, the, the archangel, the highest angel. He's in charge of the angels. Some angels rebelled and went with, with, with Lucifer. But the highest angel, when the assignments were being passed out, and the Lord said, okay, I want this angel over uh, this country, and I want this angel over this country. And he comes to Israel and he says, you know what? No angel will do for Israel except Michael, the chief angel. Now that right there is enough if you're a Bible believer to let you know God is not done with Israel. Right? There's no, you're not going to find a single Bible verse that says God took Michael and reassigned him from Israel to America. It doesn't exist. In fact, in the future, Revelation chapter 12, we're told that Michael gets called up and he and his angels go fight against Satan and his angels. Satan and his angels get cast out. And when they do, they're cast down to the earth. And the Bible says, man, that's when it all breaks loose on the earth. Why? Because Michael was called away. In fact, I, I, I think if you read about the one that withholdeth, I think it's Michael. I really believe it's Michael. And if, if you don't understand what I just said, that's fine. And go whoosh, just like that. If you do and you got a question, you ask me, and, and I'll give you that. But it seems to me that there is one archangel. His name is not Gabriel, it's Michael. And Michael is the prince that watches over Israel. What a great God that we have to think all these things through. Uh, he's so faithful.